So uh, let's call the Board of Public Works the meeting uh, meeting to order. It is um, January 8th, 1978, 2014. <laughs> and uh, we're being recorded by Northampton Community Television. Uh, first order of business are uh, for your approval the minutes of the January 4th hearing at uh, Cook Avenue. I don't recall seeing the minutes. I did. They came out via email. It was one paragraph from the, um, I got them. I didn't the hearing. Uh, they came out Monday, didn't they? Monday? Yeah, all right. I'm sure they were terrific, though. Ned did them. Ned. They were great. Yeah. <laughs> Short and sweet. They were. But I'll second that motion. <laughs> all right. All in favor of accepting the minutes as presented? Aye. Aye. Excellent. I've been told they were terrific. Next under new business, proposed changes to the Glendale Road Transfer Station hours of operation. The staff would like to make a proposal. There's a memo in your package in regards to this. Uh, you should find it on the table. Uh, this was um, out of response to a request from some residents and counselors about uh, changing the hours of the operations at the Glendale Road Transfer Station to be more accommodating to the residents of Northampton. Uh, Dave Lutter took a look at this, our senior civil engineer, and currently, as you can see, the existing transfer station hours are from 7 to 4 on Saturdays, and yard waste composting is the second and fourth Saturdays of the month from April 1st to November 30th. Uh, we're looking at proposed operations beginning April 1, 2014, the transfer station would be open from Wednesdays 8 to noon and from Saturdays 7 to noon, so there's no net change in hours. And the transfer station will be able to set leaves and grass but not brush in an open recycling bin uh, uh, placed up there at the uh, gate one, as we call it, a regular drop-off area for citizens. And that way they can bring their leaf and yard waste compost without accessing the um, composting area year-round also. And uh, there's no change in our compost area operations. We'll still be open the um, second and fourth Saturdays of the month from April through November for that particular purpose of leaf collection. But it just opens up a little more options for the residents of Northampton to use the facility and for leaf and yard waste composting. I think it's an improvement. Okay. I think it's good. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I would agree. I, I'm just curi curious about where. Um, where the yard waste in the dumpster goes. There's currently a drop-off wall made out of um, basically concrete blocks. Oh, I it's understand set that. Up. It's, once the dumpster's full, where does it go? It goes to the composting area. Okay, so they just have to transfer the, like, right. the next yard over kind of thing. Would they have to leave, go out on the road and come back in? Um, during the spring, summer, fall, probably not. They can use the internal landfill roads, but they're not plowed during the winter. So outside of that, they'd have to go around. Okay. Oh, this would be year-round? Yes. Awesome. How do you define brush? Uh, brush is defined, I think, less than four feet in length and under six inches in diameter. That's if you cut it, if you cut it small enough, you can pretty brush. much do everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. right. It's, it's on our webpage, and we have a sheet for the residents, but it's a certain diameter and under a certain length. Yeah. And will this largely, we've had a few people coming in to talk to us about a uh, small landscaping Companies. It will help accommodate and will take care of everyone's needs though. But it is a change to accommodate. People couldn't make it there on Saturdays or didn't want to wait two weeks uh -huh. or three weeks. So this opens up to a regular use. Okay. We're not taking small landscaping material. It's current it's residential, it's residential only. only. Well who's there's a guy who has been in here a couple of times. He's also caught cornered me. He's probably a residential landscaper, but he's probably using under a or a commercial landscape. He's using his residential pass, okay. which the gatekeeper should flag if they see heavy loads or continuous loads from one individual. That should be flagged. Yeah, we're not doing commercial. Anymore. All right, Chris. Um, I think this is a great suggestion. I think that um, we should really make the most of it as far as uh, public relations, in 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 two ways. One is uh, it reflects our willingness to do what we said we were going to do, which was review the process mm -hmm. as we move forward. And secondly, um, uh, I think it's going to require, 
I think it's an educational opportunity that, that we shouldn't pass up. I don't know exactly how we ought to do it, but I think it's um, a situation where, I mean, it would be great if we could uh, feed a story to uh, the local media, and I'm not sure how um, we should do that, but uh, I think this is a really good opportunity for us to, to show that we are responsive to um, yeah. The, 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 the critique the, the input of, of uh, that we've, we've accommodated yeah and and that and because this is gonna this is gonna hold us in good stead moving forward when we can say look this is another example of how your feedback is important to our decision-making process so I, um, I I think we should put some thought into I mean we've got a couple of months I think we should put some thought into how we want to um, amplify that. Yeah, it's good work, Jim. We're actually obligated by our DEP permit to have, I wouldn't call it a media blitz, but we're obligated under the permit to notify butters and residents um, and give them a certain amount of notice before we make the change, which is the reason why it's delayed until April, mm -hmm. because we need to go through the sort of thing that Chris is suggesting would be a good idea to do. So we will be, you know, do a release in the blog and a press release, and we actually have to send out letters to some folks and, and the whole thing. So we'll. We'll try to make it a positive message. And would it, could, no, that be, say, yeah. could that go to the city council? Could it go to the city council? But could they be on the list of, of people course. getting letters? Sure. Mm -hmm. Of course. Usually the, the media outlets are following our blog. They pick up on it. And anything we post on our blog, I typically cut and paste to an email to the Republican and the Gazette. Oh, great. And city councilors? Not city councilors, but we can do that. Well, the number of us have <coughs> asked about this, particularly Marianne. But yep. I Great. can send a cap copy to Mary Madura. Of she can put it in the council package. Yeah, Perfect. She can put okay, so um, so this is before us for our approval. Um, ready to vote? Yes. Mm -hmm. All in favor of this uh, this proposed change? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next, a contract for hydrants to Auburn Wind Water Works in the amount of $16,785. This is our annual bid we do for hydrants of different um, lengths of burial, five and a half and six foot burial. Uh, we had three bidders on this. Auburn Wind Water Works was the lowest bidder at $16,785. The high bidder was EJP, which is EJ Prescott out of Waitley, Mass at $18,000. $559.80. Uh, the change is about a $30 drop from last bid in materials per hydrant, just so you're aware of that. And then we'll, these are just, we can buy what we need up to $16,000. Uh, yes. We're just buying five of each size. So 10. This is for 10 oh, is that so we buy them in advance of needing them? Yeah, we yeah. stockpile them because car accidents, things happen, we need them like that. And because of the procurement amount is over 10,000 with that vendor in any given year, we need to have a contract in place. Hmm. So, this is an annual contract that the board has approved on many years. Sure. And does the um And if, if the small size, for example, we don't go through them quite quickly enough, we, we would only get two or three or whatever? They typically, they can either, I don't know, Dave Sparks is running the water department, does he order them, stockpile them all at once, or it's an open ended contract that the crew can go up and pick up two in a week or one next week and two in another month as they need to be replaced and broken. Okay. But we have an open contract for this. Jim? Oh, I was just going to say that um, I don't know if the board members noticed that we identified the funding source in the agenda. Yeah, I, I did. Was hoping, I was hoping nice. Dick would be yeah, here. Yeah, I know. Today. It's too bad. It's, it's, it's <laughs> so we've shown. But this is coming from the Water Enterprise Fund, these items. Yeah. No surprise there, I guess. Excellent. But, yeah. um, all right. I'll approve. All in favor of approving the contract for hydrants? Aye. 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 Great. Next is a contract for the GIS layer development for stormwater fee setting to CDM Smith in the amount of $30,000. Funding source will be the general fund. Okay. It's a contract with, with CDM Smith to do um, some work necessary to come up with a billing database for the proposed stormwater and flood control utility that's being considered by the by the city council. Um, the information um, is needed at, 
uh, at this point, I think, to answer some questions that councilors have had and the, uh, some members of the business community have had about more specific information on bills. Um, it's also necessary to um, continue moving the project forward. If the city city's ultimate intention is to have uh, the utility available for the next fiscal year, then some of the homework needs to be done in order to be prepared for that. Um, there's a lot of a lot of groundwork that needs to be done. Um, the ultimate deliverable under this contract with CDM, after their manipulation of various sources of GIS data, would be a basically a table that has all the information that we need for every parcel within the city to determine what their bill would be. Um, so it goes through and would identify pervious and impervious areas and square feet um, by, by parcel. And it would have parcel ID, the owner name, property address, um, and other information that would be necessary to have a sort of a master list for billing purposes. Um, it's going to take them probably close to three months, I think, to to sort through all the data and work with us on, on coming up with the information that's necessary. And the uh, cost to complete this uh, database work is $30,000. Funding sources, general fund. Is this the statewide flyover? This is using some, it's using a variety of information. Some of it was from statewide GIS data. Some of it's local GIS data in terms of property lines, assessor information, uh, other things. So it'll be a, um, the source material that they're working with will be some, uh, will come from a variety of sources, some local, some state. I believe David is referring to the collaborative agreement with a number of communities of a new flyover of Northampton and other communities of the state for higher resolution GIS. Two completely different things. I see. But that okay. future flyover could be used to even further fine tune the previous areas. And Jim has assured me that when we do get that information, uh, Andy Kiefer here in the office will be able to. Just marry the two together. Is that light on? It is. Light on. Chris. Um, just a point of information, and it may be that this is a unique situation, but uh, or that the answer doesn't lie at this table. But um, is it has been a practice in past? Um, so, assuming for a moment, for instance, that we do create uh, a new revenue source for um, things related to the stormwater and. Uh, do we ever go back and, and transfer funds back into the general fund um, once we've dedicated a, a funding source for that um, or not? You see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Did I do that mm -hmm. adequately? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen it done on the O&M side. Um, basically, as a new utility comes in, they might take over bonds that are in place to right. pay, sure. things of that nature. Yeah. I've never seen particular line items being done over fiscal years. Thank you. Will, will this information allow us to get to where I think some people wanted us to go to, but it seemed too uh, impossible, and that is to have a rate for every single pop property that, you know, because of the way my situation is slightly different than my neighbors, even though the acreage is the same, but they have more impervious surface or I have more. Yes. So that means that we're going to dispose of the, the three. We had one for residential at one point, and then we went to three. No, we're still going to use three rates, okay. three residential, three three, three right. residential tiers. Okay, but would then they be adjusted by individual property uh, within that rate? Your individual property would you would look at the individual property to figure out which tier it fell into. Ah, okay, all right, all right. So that it just makes that the establishment of what rate I fall into much more accurate, much more precise. That's right. Okay. Um. In um, updating the, the GIS data, some, it's been my experience that you ultimately there's some developments that are so recent that they aren't covered by any mapping, and like a commercial development on King Street, for example. So, in here, is there an effort? Is there an allowance of time to bring those those parcels into the the mapping? Or? Um, our GIS layer for prop including the property development should be up to date they would up they would bring that up to date every 2011 in 2011 was the last time was the last is the data they are using i believe 
unless they have new. I don't know if CDM has newer, a newer layer, orthophono layer. They may. They we're may we're point. aware of a of a, a number of uh, office of planning development permits for new developments that we have the files for in order mm -hmm. to provide information for that. Yeah. So we're aware that it's an issue. I'm not sure exactly how up to date the city's GIS information is relative to new subdivisions and lots that have been subdivided. How frequently they do that? I thought they did that annually, which means it would be fairly up to date. Up to date. But we have we have discussed it internally, and there's you know there are a handful of developments the last few years. Well, there's all the King Street work, the King Street work, the yeah. new Cole Morgan site, uh, right. other ones. And we have very accurate information on those. Actually, we don't need CDM to look at the information to get us the impervious and pervious data for that because we would actually have it from their submittals for stormwater permits. Yeah. So the stormwater permits that all these types of, a lot of them would have, we have detailed data already. Okay. And then I noticed in a couple of locations, um, there's an acknowledgement that they may end up with issues that um, CDM can't resolve. Right. And I assume that that comes back to the city it does. to take care of. Uh, yeah, I, I before we end up paying them more to go figure it out. Yes, what they're going to do is they're going to identify sort of anomalies in the data that need to be evaluated and they will look to collaborate with us on what the decision is. Because ultimately when we get the database back from them, we want the database complete. We don't want it complete with a bunch of stars like we're not really sure about this one right. or this one. We want it complete and done. Yeah. And we've already talked to them multiple times about the things flagging the things that we need to speak about in order to make decisions about how to come to a conclusion about them. So. Is, is that the line item that says conflict resolution? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that what it says? Conflict, conflict something. It's a line item. I think it's the last line item. Yeah. It's in their Excel spreadsheet. You sent us a backup spreadsheet. Oh, yeah. yeah that's what it is. Conflict resolution. That's, is that that's, what it says? That's what it is. I, I thought about that for a minute and figured it wasn't lawyers. No. <laughs> Trying to no. figure out why this doesn't like It's also not a lot of time. <laughs> well, exactly. That's why I figured this can't be lawyers because it's not a lot of money either. I think it's a pretty amicable group. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I think they're going to, I think they're going to identify, you know, the issues that, that are anomalies and, sure. and call us and then Doug and I and Andy and Ned or whoever are going to get together and say, okay, how do we want to deal with this yeah. particular situation, which is a little bit different. Some residents have been great too. We had some residents come up in the meeting to say, I've got this situation that's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we took notes down from people's input on, on things that are uh, going to need a closer look. So my last observation was I was looking at the level of effort and um, took the number of hours for the big chunk of work, the 330 hours. It's about two minutes a parcel is what it works out to, which is um, really a short amount of time. But maybe that's all it takes. I, I don't know. It just 330 hours looks like an awful lot of hours until you figure out they're dealing with over 9,000 parcels. It and is. then it's, yeah. in, you know. So I, I guess I was trying to determine whether or not this was an appropriate level of effort or not, and that convinced me that it probably is. Well, they, and it's a flat fee, right? It is. So it, it is. takes three minutes. It is. We spent, a lot of, we spent a lot of time with CDM identifying the scope and, and the approach and the level of effort. Um, I think Andy and Doug's input into that numerous conference, conference calls that we had, you know, resulted in a pretty good proposal and something that's going to meet what we need. And then I have one last observation, and, and it's it's not really related to the scope here, but um, I think rightfully unpaved driving surfaces are included as impervious, but I, I'm sure from what I've seen in the public sessions, the public thinks that they're pervious, that as long as there's no pavement. Dan, Dan Felton has been uh, clear all along that uh, they're pervious. That's imp no, it's impervious. <laughs> impervious, yeah. impervious. And I agree. Yeah, that, I agree absolutely. Too. That's packed. It's packed and the water just runs right off. But yeah. it just was sort of a flag here that there'll be some resistance there, I'm sure. Well, I, I think they'll also come up in the meadows trying to assess those farms down there. Right. So 
Uh, we ready to vote on this contract? Yeah. All in favor of approving the CDM contract to resolve all the uh, impervious surface and GIS data. Aye. 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 Doug, were you here for that part, or are you here for the? I think that was it. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. Well, we have a flood control yeah, update yeah, thing at, at the yeah. end, so I don't know what, if we if there were other things the board was going to discuss. Doug's here to make sure I don't say anything that's inaccurate. <laughs> basically, um, I need all the help I can in that regard. Since we may not have a quorum on the vote on Cook, because I I can't vote on it. Um, we're maybe waiting for MJ to show. Do you want to? I don't think she's coming. Oh, okay. Oh, we're good. oh, okay. All right. You might have to vote then, Chair. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I was going to move. We move out of order, but it, MJ's not coming. We have quorum. Yeah, we can do this quickly. Okay. okay. So next, for your consideration, a, a discussion of the whether or not we should recommend that the City Council accept Cook Avenue. A portion of. Pardon me? A portion of. A portion of, yes. Uh, there's a there's a little snippet of it at the end that's going to come before us as a separate issue. Uh, I'm in favor of moving forward on that discussion. We need to vote on that. Okay. The the major the majority, the piece we looked at Saturday. As yeah. laid out in that drawing that we saw. Right. Yeah. I don't think there's probably much discussion. No, no. I, I move that we uh, recommend to the city council that Cook Avenue be accepted as public public way. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of recommending that the city council accept the majority of Cook Avenue. Aye. 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 <coughs> Not voting. One of staff. All right. Uh, finally, we. Uh, before we get back to stormwater, we have a contract for a wastewater treatment plant generator rental to Kinsley Power Systems in the amount of twelve thousand five hundred. Approval. Second. This contract is coming forth in front of the board. Um, when we realized that the generator down the back of Marinci generator down the wastewater treatment plant was not going to be able to be used going further, uh, we are scrambling trying to keep an existing generator that was down there for the electrical testing. Uh, there and keep it there. Um, it took us um, about two months to finally resolve a new contract for the long-term contract, which the board signed, I uh, believe, two meetings ago. But it went over $10,000 for that rental. And due to that, Joe Cook has asked that we have a contract in place with Quincy for that. It was supposed to be about a month and a half rental. It ended up being two months before we had a final signed contract. So this is kind of clearing up a matter that we didn't think was going in front of the board, but has to now. So it's not. It's not in addition to the money we discussed last time. It's just the the money we discussed last time has grown a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. How long is it for? This was for a two month period. It was from October through, I believe it was December 11th was the rental and then we started in a new agreement with the Board of Public Works for a long-term rental, I believe up to a year, with a $60,000 or $70,000 uh, value to it. And not really relevant to this, but <clears throat> where are we at as far as identifying what will happen at the end of that one-year rental period? We're working on a request for qualifications to hire someone to help us with that. Okay. How big is the generator? 500. 500 KW, yeah. Yeah. And that will run the whole? It will plant. not. It will not run sludge processing or the odor control. Uh, the existing generator is 460 kilowatt. But this will definitely cover what that was running previously. The discussion. All in favor of approving this uh, contract for generator rental? Aye. Aye. Uh, stormwater flood control. So we had a uh, really great meeting on Monday. Um, Susan Wright, uh, the uh, finance director for the city, brought together 
the city treasurer, the assessor, the tax collector, uh, Jim and Ned. Um, I don't know some of the other people there. I can't auditor. The auditor. Uh, all the financial people basically for the whole city. And the topic uh, under discussion was, if the city council approves establishing an enterprise fund, what would have to happen around these different city departments before we could begin the actual sending up bills? And um, so there are things, for example, Anne Marie here in this office has one set of customer IDs for water and sewer, but they don't necessarily match up with the customer numbers over at the assessor's office or the parcel IDs. So we have to begin, and sometimes it's an ex case of like there are a couple of dashes in one set but not in the other set. So someone's got to start working all of that together. The CDM report uh, stuck out in that meeting as the thing that's probably going to take the longest. And the sooner we get specific information back from CDM, the sooner the schools, for example, can put together accurate budgets. We have, we have information enough that they could have close estimates, but they could plug in the correct number for JFK, or for the high school. Um, the nonprofit, Lilly Library, is asking what they should be thinking about. We don't have a good answer yet. We don't have a specific answer yet. Again, the CDM report will do that. So that, that really stuck out as the one thing we really can't wait until the city council acts in March. Assuming they say yes, there won't be enough time left. So um, it was agreed that we would proceed as if um, they're going to say yes, and then shift course at the end if they don't. There was discussion, should, the, should everyone start working on two separate budgets? Should we presume it's not going to go unless it does go? And the best solution seemed to be presume it's going to go, and then quick reverse course if it doesn't. Um, so for example, it was agreed, uh, some people will get a stormwater bill who don't get a water bill or a sewer bill. The plan is that on your water bill, there would be a new line item. So there's water, sewer, and stormwater will be the third line item. So once it's all set up, it'll just be pieces of paper going out every quarter. Um, but for example, it was agreed that they wouldn't start um, creating new customers in the system. Those, that is, those people who don't get a water or a sewer bill at this point until we have a firm answer from the city council. They won't start putting new categories into MUNIS, the municipal uh, computerized accounting system, until we're positive that those need to go in there. So, for example, the um, Susan Wright encouraged Anne Marie to just start building things in Excel uh, in the interim, and then just drop them right in, assuming that the city council approves that. Uh, so, as I say, the the big thing was what to do with the CDM report, which we knew was going to take more time than we were going to have between uh, the City Council's decision and July 1st. And we all trooped down to the mayor's office and he was, you know, he, he heard it out and agreed that, yeah, it sounds like that should go forward. Uh, I, th I thought it was a great meeting. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Very productive. That's all I've got. Uh, credits. There's been uh, some discussion here and there about uh, credit manual laying on a framework for credits, and I wanted to ask the board about um, how far you'd like to proceed on, on discussing credits. A few um, a couple of months ago, there was a board subcommittee that worked on credits. Doug and I had come up with sort of a framework for a credit program. Um, ultimately, a credit program will require a fairly detailed technical manual to go along with it in terms of how things would be calculated and credits would be exactly determined. But the types of credits that would be considered in the value of those credits um, were worked out mainly uh, in a board subcommittee and we could bring that back in sort of a, um, I guess kind of a, not a full-blown manual, but sort of a detailed framework for the board to consider. 
It seems like I know Councilor Adams has been asking for more detail about credits and about whether information about credits would be available before they're asked to vote on the ordinance. It seems like it's a good idea to do that. Um, and I'm wondering, uh, from the board's perspective, what do you think the framework that we've been working with, which basically would be like two or three pages outlining the types of credits and the value of those credits, whether that would be enough in your mind or whether you think more would need to be done in terms of the credit manual and more technical aspects of how the credits would be calculated. And also what the schedule would be for this when you'd like to see something from us. Jesse is clearly asking for this. Right. Um, there have been two rounds of emails about that. Yep. Yeah. Well, I was on the subcommittee, and one of the things that became clear to I think everyone is that you could only offer a portion, you could never get to zero. I think the best you could do was 50%. Right. And, and then I think there was only a, a few circumstances where that would happen. Um, so I think if that can be shown clearly in the two or three page document, I don't see why the city council would need to know how you get there. I think once you understand that concept, I think it, um, you know, maybe that's enough. I don't, I don't know, but it seemed to me we, we already have that, or very close to having that, we don't do. we? We do. So that would mean we could talk about that soon. And it's, then it would help us determine whether or not we would need that we, if we felt like we needed to have all the details. It's hard to write stuff down. I mean, it all sounds good. We, we, I think we all understand what it's going to be, but it actually takes some work to put it down in writing. And I, I think we could go further than we have. Yeah, I think it's a, I'm sorry. Uh, no. Um, I think for me the real question is um, to put the actual manual together, I want to make sure that we had enough time to do it right in terms of something that gets into a lot of technical detail um, to make sure that if we put together a manual that, that we ask the board to approve, that it's thorough and accurate and suitable. And if we're in a big rush, then I would be concerned, a little bit concerned about that. So, and, and we can do it. You know, we can work on that if it's necessary. We need to kind of refocus our efforts on that to make sure that it's available. Um, I'm, I guess I'm trying to gauge what, what's the appropriate level of information that the council desires in order to be able to make their decision on what the ordinance. Um, we're trying to work out other things in regard to the, the proposed utility as well in terms of budgeting and organizational aspects and staffing and, and those things. So that there's, a, there's a few parallel spokes and then with the CDM work starting, um, you know, every time we ask somebody to do something it involves more work for us as well. So I'm just trying to figure out what, exactly what, um, you know, what the priority would be there. Yeah, this is why, to me, it, it makes sense to have the board look at what we've already got. I mean, we could do, I'm just talking out loud here, one thing, you know, we could work on something more detailed than the framework and have sort of a non-binding board vote of this is the draft manual and that would allow us if we felt like we needed more time to review how we were going to calculate some of the credits in terms of, uh, you know, the real detail, then that would, that would give us the blessing of between now and July 1st to determine, um, you know, exactly what the thing is and bring the full manual back for, for final board approval later in June. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of just kind of talking out loud. I mean, one thing we could do, I guess, is Doug and I could, we could double back and look at exactly how detailed the manual is going to be and what we think a realistic time frame to do a thorough job would be. We haven't, I haven't done that. We haven't really discussed that in, in any detail other than we know the credit manual, some of the credit manuals we've seen are are all of the categories clearly defined? I think they are. Yeah. I think the categories are clearly defined in the framework that we get out of the board subcommittee. And it's just a matter of defining how, you know, some of them were, as Gary indicated, maximum credit up to 50%. You know, the question is how do you document, how do you get to the 50? Right. Right. It's not, you just don't get the 50, it's how do you get somewhere between zero and 50.
Yes. Um, I want to echo what, what, what Jim was just saying about the complexity issue because there's a whole range of, you know, levels of, I mean, the Ohio gang being the sort of the, the, the high end. Um, and I think part of that, what will determine what level of, of um, depth we need to go into, has to do with a decision maybe here our, based on our recommendation maybe here or maybe based on our recommendation with the city council as to what the goals of the credit system are. Um, I've heard, I thought, you know, I've been a big proponent of the credit system um, in order to encourage um, um, a favorable response to the overall program, but I've heard an awful lot of animosity towards the concept uh, when we've gone out in the public because there are members of, of the public who view this as a way for particularly big entities to get out of paying for things. And so I think that, um, I, don't, I don't know that it changes the way we address it from a technical standpoint, but I think that at some point, it, it, as we move forward with this, somebody's gonna have to take um, some time to think, and you were saying writing things down is difficult, but to, to um, to do something to sort of refocus the discussion away from um, the sort of get out of jail free mentality and, and focus it on this idea of we're all in this together and that, that this is a, a participatory, not just the, not just the um, and I'm not doing this as well as I would have wished, but um, not just uh, the exemption or credit program, but also this idea that the whole thing is about you know how communities come together to 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 solve a, a serious problem. Um, I, I'm more than happy to work with people to try and take a crack at that. It, 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 and it's going to be verbiage, and it probably should come from the city council. So you see that as maybe being a preamble to the credit something like that. I mean, just or 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 and you know how we're going to how we're going to broach this thing whether it's going to come out as a document or something like that I, I don't know you know forward or an intro or you know um, a statement of intent um, I, I think we've I think you know given the couple of public meetings that I've attended I think there's a begrudging acceptance to the concept yeah. um, but there's no enthusiasm for it and um, my hope was that that um, as I, as we got into this, you know, months and months ago, was that uh, the credit incentive program was going to be something that would help build at least some forward momentum yeah. on getting it, and it hasn't been that. It's actually become sort of a lightning rod for for critique, and uh, a little bit to my surprise. Yeah, to me also, you know. Um, uh, and maybe I'm, I was naive in that regard, but um, I, I guess I'm not really proposing anything specific, but I think as we move forward, this is something we need to, we need to keep our eye on. Um, the, the, the communities where these things seem to have been successful is where they've been, um, and I'm thinking about Richmond in particular, where there's been a real specific um, understanding of what the goals of the incentive program were mm -hmm. and and I think that um, uh, one of the failings that 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 I can credit myself for was other, was other than getting people to um, you know increase their enthusiasm there wasn't a real goal and I think that that has to flow from what does the city want out of any sort of incentive program is it about participation is it about um, and, and you've been really good on this is it about actually reducing the burden on the system. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the really good credit programs have walked away from this idea of incentivizing people to want to participate and they've looked at this, 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 this actual outcome, which is we're, we're gonna re we are actually going to use the incentive program um, not as a not as a you know a one-off buy-in, but as a way to um, enhance the system's capability to deal with the problems, whether it's volume or quality or whatever. 
and we we didn't I didn't approach it that way. Mm. I, I was a, I, I acknowledged that that was out there, but that hasn't been the sales pitch that 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 I thought was the one that was going to work. And I think that maybe changing gears in that direction, you know, that as we move sense. forward, is something to think about. So identify the uh, the goal. Yeah, yeah, and we haven't done that. Right. We haven't done that. I was going to say, you know, Chris is making a lot of good points about this credit program. My my sense from observing all the task force meetings was that it initially fell out of the equity discussion that, you know, you've got entities that are spending a lot of money on managing stormwater on their site and somehow because they're investing so much in systems that mitigate that they should get a credit. So it was sort of this equity discussion, but Chris's comments about reducing the burden on the system and trying to modify people's behavior uh, in regard to stormwater management. Um, these incentives ho hoping to do that were dis was discussed a little bit in the task force but not quite so much but it's right. an important part of the overall system yeah. so um, making sure that all those points are made and that like you're saying it's not just get out of jail free for for people that have invested but um, you know for, for all these reasons there are different types of credits and incentives yeah. being made available I've suggested the gym and I think I think it should be an important part of this is that all of these credits should go away Five years out, the credit's gone. You know, you get the credit, then you get 80%, 60%, 40%, and at five years, there's no credit unless you do something new. I, I don't see just because you put in a drainage swale in your driveway that you get 25% uh, off of your bill in perpetuity. I think it should go away. Well, I think it, you know, the, the point of the system is to bring in money, you know, to accomplish flood control right. as well as uh, stormwater. And uh, it seems to me that, to, that the credit should be based on how much money is saved by, by reducing their runoff. In other words, aim it at dollars. Whether the system looks pretty or not is irrelevant. It's really the performance of the system in terms of retention or reducing runoff. That's tricky. What if my property slopes away from the road? Yeah, I, I mean, we had that one gentleman well, come in and talk yeah. sp very specifically wrong. about how. I know. So yeah. I want I want a hundred percent credit. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, it would be really slippery to start. What if it slopes away from the road and ends up in East Hampton? Yeah. I think the upshot to me of all of this stuff is that it doesn't. It almost. At a certain point, it doesn't matter, and this is why the credit can only take it to a certain point, and 50% seems like the absolute bottom you can go, because there still has to be a stormwater system that we right. need to maintain, right. and we still have a flood control system that is kind of irrelevant to anything that happens right here. It's all about what's happening upriver right. that we have no control over, so we have to maintain that system for a completely different purpose, but it's all based on the same <laughs> stuff. Yeah. It's the volume of rainwater that falls immediately on the city and upstream of the city. We are in a drainage basin of a much larger scale, yeah. so we have to accommodate the uh, maintenance of both of those systems. And the task force did not see that one coming, my recollection was. We really didn't think about the sort of holistic issue of flood control. We were really mm -hmm. focused on stormwater. Right. Um, and I, I think that makes a good point. But again, you know, I, I, and I'm with you on 50%. I just want to point out, for instance, going back to the Richmond scenario where they offered 100% because their goal was completely different. It had to do with qualitative, you know, aspects of the runoff. Yeah. And well, they also may not have had a flood control system. Yeah. Well, so. For all we know. Yeah. yeah. So when the board dealt with this issue um, earlier. Was it just the subcommittee or the entire board that saw the work products that came out at that time? I don't think the full board has had a presentation it, of it. It, would, haven't seen this it would help me a lot I'm, I'm, in order to get caught up to see what's okay. been done so far and maybe some of the examples that we're talking about to yeah, come from other areas. Cause I'm, I don't think it would take long to understand it. We'd spend okay. half an hour reading this stuff yeah. and we'd be, we'd be right there. We can email. So they clarified everything for you. Yeah. Where's uh, <laughs> you're good to go now? <laughs> Runoff. There's a division. We'll email uh, a draft framework to the full board, maybe for discussion at the next board meeting. Okay. Um, there, there are some other credit manuals. Um, 
we can we store those on the website, Doug. Mm -hmm. Um, we can point out links to the credit manuals that are online. Actually, okay. I don't know if they're on the website. Well, the other thing is we can, I, I have a, um, just the, it's the unedited version of that chapter of the overall report that has the links to all the other manuals that we looked at, which I could also circulate. Yeah, look at you. I okay. have a couple good ones, right? I mean, the Ohio one. The Ohio one is outstanding. I mean, but it's scary. Yeah. I don't like that one because I don't think it's practical. No, it's not. Um, but it's not outstanding, but impractical. Well, you get. I mean, it's forty-two pages of like <laughs> it was written by formulas. An, it was written by an engineer that yeah. never, got, never got out of his office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took a look at that. And I was like, you know, if we're gonna do something like this, we're gonna have to. No, no disrespect to the, you know, Jim and 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 it, and the rest of the crew and Doug, but we're gonna have to farm this thing out. You know, we could we could never do this in house. It's just too, it's crazy. Um, all right, so we'll talk about this some more. In in your, if I could read into what you were hinting at, you wouldn't be sad if you could put this off for a couple of months. We'll do whatever it takes. My only concern is presenting something as final and rushing it. You know, we're just concerned about the quality of the work. <coughs> no, I thought Jesse's reaction to your email was fine. Uh, Jim made a point to Jesse Adams that um, although we could certainly present the outlines of the credit system, there was a, a level of technical detail that um, Jim, Jim's point was it would seem to make sense to not, put, not to expend that effort until we're certain that this is going to go through. And, I, and he seemed to think that made perfect sense. So. Would, would it make any sense for Jesse to work more goals into the ordinance itself? To, to suggest Say that? Say again? No. Okay. Don't think but you can ask the board since, no, I, I, I think since they are the board. Well, we can bring I, it. I, I think the idea of goals has been brought up before, and I think it's a good idea to have goals, you know, clear goals that this is aiming towards. And I guess I'm not entirely clear why something like that wouldn't be in the ordinance itself because that's not a technical standard um. mm. well let I, I, f I feel like we need to as I, I said earlier it's hard it's actually a little hard to write things down and get them clear and uh, I think it could be taken to a somewhat higher level without getting into too much of the technical stuff yeah I mean the ordinance is functional yeah. And having like preamble type stuff, like have a credit program because it'll be great to incentivize this and that. That's not really what an ordinance does. The ordinance language right now does say establish a credit incentive program to help people. No, I'm, I'm specifically talking about the credit program. Right. I don't see that as being part of the ordinance either. Right. Okay. I mean, I think it's covered in the ordinance to say the established one and the board will approve it. Yeah. That's, that. It's policy. Yeah. Right. It's not. But I'm saying that the policy could get to a somewhat next level without having to go into the level of technical detail yeah. in your... I agree. I think a lot of the Chris's comments, they were good about the preamble and the goals and, yeah. you know, making it more. I mean, you've seen the draft. I mean, it's pretty, you know, this you get 50, this you get 20. I mean, you could add a lead in and more of a description. Some and whereases and wherefores. Yeah, you know, whatever, uh, whatever people want to see. Yeah. So you'll you'll email the stuff around. Yeah. It, it is it is you, you could see the tension in the meeting with all the financial people, just that whole issue of not appearing to get ahead of ourselves with the city council, and, and yet give ourselves enough time to get this done properly. It's a little bit of a balancing act. Sure. That's a big balancing act. Okay. I, have one, I have one other related thing. We, we uh, realized there's about 1,500 um, addresses, property owners, that are outside of Northampton that did not get the mailing, 15,000 mailing, because that was to all addresses in the city. So we're doing a second round of mailing, same basic thing, no meeting dates on it, um, to, to 1,500 addresses outside the city, probably going out next week. Great. So we want to make sure everybody <coughs> has heard before they get to bed. Okay. 
By the way, uh, the Cook Avenue people will get a, a, a letter. It's ready to go. Excellent. And I'm just waiting on your boat tonight. Any? Oh, didn't we already do that? We did it. We did, we did it. it. Yeah. yeah. And Alan Seawall, anything? Nothing. Okay. Great. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Yeah. Private ways. <clears throat> Thank you. We're waiting for Alan Seawall to move forward with what kind of taking instrument or easement we're going to be doing with the homeowners of, we have three in the works right now with Edward Square, Church Street, Isabella Street are the three that are in queue right now at the solicitor's office. My understanding through uh, Northeast Survey that majority of the field work was done before snow came down. You might have some, if we have a January thaw, we might be able to get up some more, but, and he has been, uh, assigned um, Bottoms Road and will be assigned Cook Avenue going forward too. So do we have like 15 or 20 of that of those packages back from them? Um, I have not seen them yet, but I know they're trying to complete all the field before the snow came in. We did see um, one set of surveys for the uh, Bradford Street areas, the three different streets down there. And that was done by Heritage Survey because they had all the information collected for the Street pump station and the easements that we were working with with DEM. So talking with Northeast Survey, they said you should let the survey finish that work since they've already got all the ground control and all the information out there. And we just signed off on uh, draft plans of those to be finalized with Heritage, um, it was yesterday. So th those three streets will be coming up in the very near future at Allenton. Okay, so we don't have much back from that. In terms of finished product, only three full streets we have finished product for at this point. And we had three those three streets two months ago. That's correct. We're waiting for the city solicitor. No, I'm from the surveyor. Those are the only three mylars that we have ready to go to be recorded at the registry once the instrument of taking is done. Right. That's so. My point is, the other mylars. Um, are they are they trying to just do everything? all of the field work and all of the legal work and then we'll get like 25 mile hours at once or no what what the what the process is if they give us a draft plan on paper that we check out we'll go up the street make sure it's encompassing everything we want it to and once we do that we give it to um, back to the surveys they finalize any changes then it goes to Alan Seawall for title research to see where the actual property owners are and once that list is created it comes back uh, for any final edits on the on the plan for final mylar okay. to be produced and then the instrument of taking or easement whatever it's going to be will be done so the surveyor can't they quite finish what they're doing unless alan does so his, his title work that's correct because he he's identifying all the property owners abutting the private way okay so I'm, I'm i'm poking around here i'm trying to figure out exactly where we're at so how many of them does Alan have? Three. Well, that's the part that I'm confused about. He has three that's in his court right now to deal with. We're still waiting for... I would think there'd be like 15 or 20 by now. I'm waiting for the survey work, Terry. It's being done in the field. I haven't seen paper copies from Northeast Survey yet Okay. that we can further along. So do we have schedules for each street? I guess Terry's wondering. They're not doing them all simultaneously, right? They're doing some They've started some, they're in different phases of completion, I assume, of the plans for different streets? So. That's correct. I, I don't know the, the ex, exact stages that Dan have, or Northeast Survey have four or five of them ready to go at the end of next week and another eight the following week. I don't know that schedule, but I can ask them I would expect for they, scheduled deliverables. I would expect they might trickle in, right, one at a time, as soon as they're done, they'd send them well, over. Well, that's, 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 that's why I'm, I mean, we had, I thought we had three like in September. We did. And that the city solicitors. I, 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 oh, I, get, oh I, I totally get that. I'm wondering why Northeast Survey hasn't given us a couple in October, two or three more in November, some in December. I can ask Northeast Survey tomorrow. Okay. I, I, that's kind of what I was expecting. So, so my point is, it's not really just Alan that's holding us up. The surveyor is not <clears throat> producing either. We haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. That's all I got. Gary? Yeah. 
uh, we didn't have any water main breaks, did we, during the cold snap? We had a water service break on wood buying oh. and a water line break on private property, the Northampton Nursing Home Bridge Road. Yeah. Broke a water line, we had to shut off the water uh, service at the street. And is it likely that we, that, that <coughs> is it likely that the breaks would happen after the freeze is over? I, I forget the timing of, it seems like in the last few years when we've had really cold snaps, the break doesn't happen during the cold snap, it, it happens later. They're kind of hit or miss. Okay, so I'm not in. I think with the big rain event might have caused, I mean, it, I, I think the ground's pretty much frozen everywhere at this exactly. point. But with all the rain we had, and if it gets into the soil and saturates, that's going to cause fast to go deeper also. Right. It depends what causes the movement in the pipe. If it's the right. freezing that causes the movement, then you get your break. Or if it's the thawing that causes some of the movement, then you get the break. Right. So. But it does continue after the low point of temperature. Uh, yeah, exactly. It could happen anytime, really, I suppose. So if it breaks, breaks this way, it doesn't get burst by the ice? No, usually just as a shear or crack. Yeah. It's like these tuberculation, these, the tuberculation in these pipe samples that we show, where if, when you take the tuberculation out, there's actually large holes in the pipe. So if you get a little bit of movement in the, in the pipe because of that freeze thaw, it could just be like a break or a crack in one of the tubercules, and that opens up, basically opens up a hole in the pipe where the water comes out. So it's, if you think about... If you, so the tuberculation is actually plugging the zone holes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which but makes it's not, sense because the water would... But it's, yeah, it's the also, it's also a material you that causes I love these. <laughs> you can tell I love these. Vanna, what have you got for us? <laughs> got these. So you get these, you get these pipes that have got all those tubercules in there, like that sample over there. You scrape all that stuff off. If that cracks or moves a little bit, there's no pipe wall left, really. Right. So okay. that cracks, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get your thing going on there. I love these. How, how old is that pipe? You know. This one it's Kensington Avenue, was it? Yeah, this is probably 1893. 93. Wow. So it, it broke because we did a bad job of taking care of it then. We ended up doing yeah, you uh, did. routine maintenance. <laughs> yes, we didn't routinely replace it yes. every 50 years like maybe we should have. And what's that, uh, that blue, that cool blue container for? That was for the delivery of those samples, so I would have them to keep showing people. But it, but it was chemicals or? What's the? No, it's cool. Original. I don't know what it was in there originally. Yeah, some kind of chemical. Oh yeah, it had uh, uh, it's some kind of scary <laughs> label on there. Do not reuse. the holes in the pipe. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, so you're off that? Yeah, Chris. Um, we had some pipes freeze up, and my wife posted on Facebook that I was able to solve the problem. So my neighbors started calling me, can you come over? <laughs> nice. When Ned starts calling you, then yeah. you know there's trouble. Inside the house, you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I said, heat lamp, There's $30 down at, down at Foster Ferrar. Hair dryers. Hair dryers. Hair dryers are not as good as heat lamps. But. Um, and also, the Mill River was at nine and a half feet yesterday. Which you're is like the, flood stage. You're reading the gauge under the uh, Thomas Street Bridge. Yeah, I think that it's that's deceiving. Yeah, it, the nine and a half low water is about six and a half. Yeah, feet, right. Because whatever that thing is is down in the soils below the water. Yeah. Well, I use a, a, a more rudimentary system, which is there's a cement um, structure that used to be part of the, the dipping station up at uh, what I call Baby Dam. The yeah. USGS gauge station. Yeah. Yeah. And that's three feet of that is underwater right now. Really? Yeah. I've been going by oh, the during the rain? pond. It doesn't during the warm the stage has changed much. I, I was surprised. We got three quarters of an inch. I have photos. <laughs> really? Yeah. Down at Paradise Pond? No, it's a, it's all the way up um at the end of Federal Street. Well I know where yeah. that is, yeah. but yeah. I am saying I, I don't look I I ride by Paradise Pond all the time. Yeah. Like the stage Anyhow, is be it be it as it may. Yeah. There's a lot of water out there. Yeah. Do you know what we got? I think I measured three quarters of an inch. Okay. Mike, anything? Yeah. Skiing update? No, Snow I'll save. Report. I'll save that. Those are all good, though. Yeah, okay. Um, seems like a couple times lately the issue of a quorum has come up, and not the quorum to open the meeting, but but once we establish a quorum, 
what's required for an affirmative vote. Um, and there's one school of thought that is we need to get an affirmative vote, you need our quorum for to vote affirmatively. And I've always thought that once you establish a quorum for a meeting, any affirmative vote is just by the people attending the meeting. Hmm. And it's an important distinction. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd like to see if we could get an answer to that. I believe you, I looked it up last You week. need a quorum to hold a meeting. Period. No, I got you that know, part. You need the quorum to vote. But what if we... You what can't if have a quorum of four and then have three vote. And, and that's where my understanding has always been different, at least yeah. on a, like a town meeting forum, you know, format. Mm -hmm. A town meeting might need 200, I'll and they and they call in 200 people, but then they don't get 200 affirmative votes to pass articles, is what I've seen, you know. So, are you saying that with a quorum of four voting, and if, if the vote is three and one abstention, it should still qualify as an affirmative yes. vote? And you're saying no. It I'm saying right. no. She's saying no. Okay. And, right. and I, I don't know how it's applied to a group this size. But I've seen it applied to a much larger group, and it's been applied the way I'm describing it. Yeah. So I just like. I okay, just like, I'll give you because I did look it up recently within the last. Well, month. it came up a little because we took a second vote. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. our yeah. Cook Avenue vote, then you're saying you think may not be. No, we no, were four. It's, no, there's you four. Had, you had well, four. if Terry there's voted, five, I didn't and vote. four are voting. But Terry doesn't vote, so we only had three vote, three affirmative votes today. I mean, I would vote for it anyway, but... Uh, yeah, you, like you to have to have four. Again? No, I put me in, too. But, um, <laughs> in the affirmative? In the affirmative, yes. I think Cook Avenue... So it would be four okay. in the affirmative and one abstention. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll give you yeah, that, like because I did that. look it up okay. after the last discussion. Because okay. it seems crippling to the function of a group. I mean. It, it then yeah. presumes that if you just get a quorum, the only decisions you can make are unanimous. And that, that just doesn't make sense right. to me. Right. No, I agree. That's all. Yeah, right. That's a good point. Thank you. Yeah? Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Mike, MJ, and Roe for uh, putting forth their applications for reimport to the Board of Public Works for another three years. Their current terms expire in March. I want to thank them for that. Thanks. Jim? Mm, something for the board members to think about. We're working on an RFQ for design improvements at the wastewater treatment plant. We're going to be doing a little designer selection board process that will involve a committee. And I think we would like to have a board member, members on that committee, at least one, I think. Um, not everybody's here tonight, so I won't look for volunteers, but uh, something to think about. We'll probably get a number of proposals that'll be like this, and you'll have to read them. We may interview people, so your obligation would be to read some proposals and rank some firms, figure out who you like, come into an interview, meet three of the firms and the people that are proposed and then take a vote on who we would hire to do the design work. So we put out an RFP yet? No. Okay, so we're not looking for any action tonight? No, nope. just something to think about. Okay. When you're down there in Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'll be... Exactly. <laughs> when you're already in line. And <laughs> uh, you all set? All set. Okay. All set. Um, I just have a question. The roundabout near the coke plant at the lower part of the industrial park? The rotary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, still has those piles of dirt, I think, left over from North Street. Mm -hmm. Are we going to spread those out after they thaw? Um, North Street's not completed yet, and therefore they'll be back in the spring to do some finishing up and clean up work also. Okay. There's some low spots in that rotary trees, low, but you can see they're like little lakes. I was wondering mm -hmm. if they're gonna. Yeah, it should be. Great. It should be restored to what, the way it was. Okay, I'm just driving past the other day, thinking about it. 
What a great place for a bio stormwater. It's not. Something. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Believe me, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. How about the playground? The uh, there's a lot going on in the world. Oh, a great place for a playground. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, you mean underground? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. Oh. <clears throat> Lots going on there. Okay. That's been thought about in detail yeah. by the planning department. No. Um, so that oh, it's been considered. Maybe a parking lot. Great for construction staging. Yeah, yeah it was ideal for that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of construction staging, before you close, um, we finished uh, recently a new force main from the Bradford Street pump station uh, along Woodmont Road up to North Street. Um, we had a problem with that old it was an as, uh, asbestos cement force main that broke this summer and the pipes getting kind of crumbly. We were very nervous about it. The board approved the contract and we did a sort of very fast uh, design process with Wood and Karn and we, we bid the project and uh, they basically worked through and did the connection on last last Thursday I think. Uh, they connected the new force main so it's great. We're very pleased with uh, with that. There's some site restoration work on that, but they did the new pipe in line. And did the old pipe come out, or is it abandoned? Campaign? It's an abandoned place. Yeah. But uh, but uh, that was a good project. The contractor did a good job, and we did it in very little time. Yes. Yeah. Who was the contractor? It was uh, Borges. 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 Yeah, they came in and did well. Is the road just going to get a patch, or is it it's just a patch? Temporary patch. I forget what we're we looked at. Ter we looked at uh, permanent patch because at some point the water line is going to need to be replaced. Even though it's on the uh, the critical list of replacement, it is a 1890 something water main in the street. Mm -hmm. How big is that? Mean? Probably about the size of that now. Six. Yeah, I think it's six inches. So if we did that, we might be able to do a mill and overlay or something when that one was done. I, What's the map up behind you? Are those proposals for stormwater? This map? Yeah. That was the work that was done. Oh, that's all done. No, that's sewer. Oh, it's sewer. That's sewer collection. Okay. As part of the alternative study. Task mm -hmm. nine, I think it was called, if I remember right. Okay. Problem areas within the sewer system that will require some type of improvement or uh, evaluation for, for I think it improvement. says either task eight or task five. I can't quite read it up there. It's clear Rose's record is going to be intact eight, yeah. in yeah. perpetuity. Yeah. Yeah. Our, chair, <laughs> our, our top chair. line of every eye chart is it's the BED. <laughs> That's all I can see. All right, e. all right, fine. Um, <laughs> all right, I guess we're done. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, hey. motion to adjourn. So we'll move. Okay. Can we, with, with just all of us, can we vote to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs>